so electrochemistry, once upon a time, we talked about these things called driving forces. <laughs> driving forces. There were four driving forces. Who remembers what they are? What's one of them? All right, formation of water, I heard. We saw that in the acid base chapter. Formation of a precipitate. Wait. Oh, okay, now I've heard them all. Okay, good job. Formation of water, uh, formation of a precipitate or of a solid. Someone said formation of a gas. I don't know who said that. And electron transfer. These were our four driving forces we talked about earlier in the year. And we saw formation of water in acid bases. We saw formation of a solid in precipitation reactions, formation of a gas, single replacement reactions, as well as some others. Um, and electron transfer, which is going to be our focus as we eventually move into trying to figure out the battery. And so electron transfer, we talked about the fact that electron transfer are found in these reactions called oxidation reduction reactions. otherwise known as redox reactions. And I even gave you some mnemonics to help you remember what is oxidation. Oil it was oil rig was one. Leo. Oh, my good friend Leo. Leo, the lion says what? <laughs> grr. Leo, the lion says grr. And in both of these, they're basically telling us the same thing. About oxidation, for oil, oxidation is loss. Or in Leo, loss of electrons is oxidation. In rig, reduction is gain. Or gain of electrons is reduction. Either way, you want to look at it. Use one, use the other. Don't use either. I don't care. So that was, that was just some stuff that we've done. And just kind of a quick reminder, um, we in the context of seeing oxidation reduction reactions, we would look at, we have looked at something, for example, like this. And yes, this is a single replacement reaction, but it's also a, an oxidation reduction reaction. And how did we know? What was a clue? Miriam? Because uh, hydrogen is now alone. Yeah, hydrogen is now alone. We have an element by itself, or even over here we have zinc an element by itself. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually assign some charges to these things. Um, if you have zinc, an element, all by itself, what is its charge? Neutral. It's neutral, so it has a charge of zero. In HCl, hydrochloric acid, what is the charge of chlorine? I know it's not balanced. Minus one. What's the charge of hydrogen? Plus one. Uh, in zinc chloride, what's the charge of chlorine? Minus one, what's the charge of zinc here? Plus two, right? And what's the charge of hydrogen when it's all by itself? It's zero, it's neutral. And so one of the things, now someone said this isn't balanced. I know it's not balanced because we actually have to learn how to balance um, more appropriately. But what I want you to see is that zinc goes from zero to plus two is did it have to lose electrons for that to happen or, or gain electrons? Lose. Lose, okay. So it would lose electrons, which would make it an oxidation. So we could say that zinc is oxidized. Who is being reduced? Who's being reduced, John? Hydrogen. Hydrogen is going from plus one to zero, and so it has to gain electrons for that to happen, and that's a reduction. <laughs> so we could say that the, the HCl is being reduced, or the hydrogen in the HCl is being reduced. What is actually being reduced? Why is it called reduction? What's actually getting reduced? 
the charge, the charge. So the charge is going from plus one down to zero, so it's being reduced. Well, here's the key in an oxidation reduction reaction. At this point, we've only balanced equations to make sure the atoms are balanced. But when we balance equations, that's not enough when it's redox. When we balance equations, we have to make sure that the number of electrons lost are equal to the number of electrons gained. In addition to making sure the atoms are balanced. And that is not something we've checked on. Now, I'm not going to balance this one. We're going to actually go through some other examples for that. Um, and I'm going to actually do about two different examples. Well, one you'll, you guys will do. So what I want you to do is I want you to, right now, open your book to page 580, wait, hold on, 586. So page 586. Because at the top of page 586, there's this, this table that says rules for assigning oxidation states. So we need to talk about, before we talk about that table, what oxidation states, or you may hear me call it oxidation numbers, what these are. So oxidation states are essentially a method for keeping track of electrons by assigning each element a number that's enough a method for keeping track of electrons by assigning each element a number Up above, on that one we just did, we assigned charges. And charges can be oxidation numbers, but if you are a molecular compound with covalent bonds and you're not made of ions, you can have oxidation numbers too. So on page 586, there are these rules. And we're going to just take a look at them. So the oxidation state of an atom in an uncombined element is zero. So up here, we can see an example of that. Here's an atom in an uncombined element. Here's an atom in an uncombined element. Their oxidation state is zero. We knew that. Uh, number two, the oxidation state of a monatomic ion is the same as its charge. So monatomic, one atom, as compared to a polyatomic ion, those ones you memorized. So for example, in this one, zinc chloride is made up of two monatomic ions. It's made up of zinc 2 plus, and it's made of C up, up of Cl minus, right? And so what that one is saying is it's the same as its charge. So because zinc is plus 2, that ion is plus 2, its oxidation number is plus 2. And because this chloride ion is minus 1, its oxidation number is minus 1. That's great. All right, number three says oxygen's assigned an oxidation state of minus 2 in most of its covalent compounds. Now, this is saying in its covalent compounds. Oxygen, if you look at the periodic table, tends to form a minus 2 charge, but it's not talking about in an ionic compound. It's talking about in something like P2O5. That's not an ionic compound. There is no oxygen ion in it. But what that is saying is oxygen is going to still be given a minus 2 oxidation state. That's what that's saying. There is an exception there, and that lists the exception as a peroxide. Probably the only peroxide you'll ever encounter is hydrogen peroxide. Anyone know what the formula is? H2O2. And what that rule is saying is in H2O2 only, oxygen won't be minus 2. It's going to be minus 1. <coughs> so that is number 3. Um, number four is saying in its covalent compounds with nonmetals. So like here, we'll use this PH3. I'm using P a lot. Okay, I'm looking at the hydrogen here for this one. So it's saying in its covalent compounds with nonmetals, hydrogen is assigned an oxidation state of plus one. 
Phosphorus is a nonmetal, so in this example, hydrogen is plus one, which is typically what hydrogen is anyway. So that shouldn't be surprising. Um, number five, in binary compounds, the element with the greater electronegativity is assigned a <coughs> negative oxidation state equal to its charges. And anti, blah, that sounds really super complicated. It's not. Here's an example to demonstrate number five. If I have something like, oh, let's say ASCl3, arsenic chloride. What you need to do is whoever is more electronegative gets something that equals its charge. Arsenic or chlorine, who's more electronegative? Look at the periodic table. Arsenic's number 33 and chlorine is number 17. Who's more electronegative? Who is closer to fluorine? Chlorine. So chlorine is more electronegative, so chlorine gets its normal charge. What's its normal charge? Minus 1. And then six and seven. Six says if it's an electrically neutral compound, the sum of the oxidation states must be zero. So in these examples, like P2O5 has no charge. If each oxygen is minus two and there's five of them, then what must the oxidation state on phosphorus be, since there's two of them? Plus five. Or in the case of PH3, what must phosphorus be? Minus three, because there's three positives, so we need a minus. How about arsenic chloride? We assign chlorine minus one. Must, what must arsenic be? Plus three. Number seven is saying if it's a polyatomic ion or if it's an ionic compound and there is a charge, instead of equaling zero, it's going to equal that charge. So think of PO4 three minus. Oxygen, based on our rules, must be what? Minus two. It's always minus two. Two minus minus two, those are the same. But in this case, they're not going to equal zero. They're going to equal minus three when we put them together. So what must phosphorus be? There's four oxygens at minus two. What must phosphorus be? Plus five. And that way, when we've got this minus eight and this plus five, it will equal the minus three. So that's what those rules say for oxidation numbers. In and of itself, those numbers mean nothing. They are a method that will help us keep track of electrons. So they're a tool we're going to use next. All right, so I'm going to give you a handful that I want you to try to assign oxidation numbers. So there's four of them. I'm going to have you do this right now. All right, try these on your own. SF6, ClO4 minus, CH4, and CO2. All right, let's see where we're at. Let me get a better color. There we go. All right, SF6. I'm looking at who's more electronegative to figure that one out. Who's more electronegative? Fluorine. fluorine. Uh, so what is the oxidation state of fluorine? Negative one. Negative one. So what must sulfur be? Plus six. plus six. Now, you guys, there's no ion that has a plus six charge. So this isn't a charge. This is an this is a covalently bonded compound. It's just the oxidation state. All right, ClO4 minus, what's oxygen? Oxygen's always easy to do. Minus two. So what must chlorine be so that together they add up to minus one? Plus seven, great. Uh, hydrogen, hydrogen's also really easy. Plus one, so what must carbon be? Minus four. And oxygen and CO2? Minus two, so what's carbon? Plus four. So notice in CH4, carbon is minus four, but in carbon dioxide, it's plus four. Okay, so it's just a tool for that. Okay, there are two methods for balancing equations that we are going to learn about. And oxidation states is a tool to do those. So we're, we're learning baby step upon baby step here is what we're doing. Uh, we're going to learn today, we're only going to focus on method one, which is balancing using the half reaction method. The whole point of these kind of special methods for balancing oxidation reduction reactions is to make sure the number of electrons lost and gained are equal. I know you know how to make the elements equal, the atoms equal. 
but you can actually mess these up in that you can balance them with the atoms correctly, but the electrons might not be balanced. And so that's what these tools are going to do. I need you to flip over in your book to page 590, hang on, 593. So flip over to page 593. This one's really important. You actually are going to need to commit this, this set of rules in the middle of the page to memory. However, I don't recommend sitting down flatly and memorizing it. It's sort of like, did you ever sit down and seriously memorize the four steps to equilibrium problems, or did you just figure them out as you learned, as you went? Yeah, I just figured them out. It wasn't like you sat down with note cards, like, right? <laughs> no, same thing here. I don't recommend that you sit down and, and, you know, flat out memorize this kind of list of how to balance. I recommend that you use it as you balance, and as you balance more and more and more, suddenly you'll be like, oh, I know what the next step is. I know what the next step is. That's really what I mean when I say you've got to memorize it. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to actually do, go through these steps, but we're going to do it by doing an example at the same time. So we're going to do the steps by way of example. So here's the example that we are going to use. Uh, we're going to take zinc plus VO3 minus. Did you know V is an element? Do you know what element it is? Those are some really good guesses. Vanadium. Vanadium. It's actually number 23. It's not even down really low on the periodic table. It is a transition metal. All right, so we are going to balance this reaction. Uh, one of the things you should notice with this reaction right away is we would not be able to balance this one normally because it doesn't even have oxygens on both sides. Now, that is not always the case in balancing redox. I mean, there are some times where you, you could look at it and go, oh, I could totally balance that by hand, except that if you don't make sure the electrons lost and gained are equal, you could still get it wrong. This one, though, hopefully you can see you could not balance by hand. All right, we're going to look at those steps in order, and I'm going to keep going back to the steps because this is what you're going to want to have with you as you do balancing. All right, here's the step one. Step one, it says identify and write the equations for the oxidation and reduction half reactions. For practice here, we're going to assign some oxidation numbers so we can see who is oxidized and reduced. So we're going to do it quick. What is the oxidation number on zinc? Zero, Zero an element by itself. How about oxygen and VO3 minus? Minus two. minus two. I picked the easy ones. So what must vanadium be then? Plus, plus, plus five. Plus five because it has to equal this minus one, right? Yep, because it has charge. All right, how about vanadium 2 plus? 2 plus. Yeah, it's really easy when it's just an, an ion with a charge. Its charge is it. So then what is it on zinc 2 plus? 2 plus. So those are easy. So when we see that, what you should be able to see is that zinc turns into zinc 2 plus, right? Is that the oxidation or the reduction? That is the oxidation loss of electrons. And inside the vanadium, the vanadium goes from plus 5 down to plus 2. So this first step says identify and write the equations for the oxidation and reduction half reactions. What we literally are writing is sort of what I have hooked together over there. Whoa, not in a highlighter, though. Let's not do that. Erase. Stop it. No, it's not liking me. Okay, there we go. Zinc goes to zinc 2 plus. This is the oxidation half reaction. It's half of the reaction. It's only the oxidation part. And then the other part is the VO3 minus turns to V2 plus. The only thing the oxidation numbers help us with in this method is seeing who gets hooked to who. We're not actually going to use the oxidation numbers now at this point in the method. It just helps us see who's being oxidized and reduced. All right, so we finished step one. Step two, it says for each half reaction, balance all of the elements except hydrogen and oxygen. So that means you're going to come here and you're going to make sure, oh, I have one zinc on each side. Great. If I didn't, I would put a coefficient to fix that. I've got one vanadium on each side, great. If I didn't, I would use a coefficient to make sure they were balanced. But I don't care about the oxygen yet because it says non-oxygen, non-hydrogen. All right, step 2B, balance the oxygen using water. So here's how I get a chance to fix the fact that I had oxygen and nothing on the other side. 
in the zinc half reaction, I don't have any oxygen, but in this vanadium one, I have three oxygens on the left. So I need three oxygens on the right. I get them by adding water, so I need three waters, because that's the only way to get three oxygens. And yes, I know I just added H's that weren't there now. But that's the next step. I know. The idea here is these are taking place in aqueous solution, so there is water available. There, when we have things like this where there are ions, there is water available. Step 2C, balance the hydrogens using H+. Well, that top one still doesn't have any hydrogens, but I just added six hydrogens, so I'm going to go ahead and add six H pluses to the other side, which tells me this is probably taking place in acidic solution, right? Because acids would give us H pluses. Ooh. And in fact, many oxidation reduction reactions require a little bit of acid to make sure the reaction goes. Okay, so that is step 2C. Step 2D, balance the charge using electrons. All right. Oh, you can't be whining yet. This is the fun stuff. All right, zinc. What's the charge on zinc? Zero. Zero. On the other side, what's the charge on this zinc? Zero. Plus two or two plus, you can write either. We are going to balance those charges by adding electrons. So how many electrons do you suppose I need to make those the same? Two. And which side should I put the electrons on? Left, right. Left, right. 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 It's the right. Because two pluses and two negatives make zero on the right, and it was zero on the left. Now they're equal. Okay. They don't have to equal zero. They just have to equal each other. We'll see that in the next one. Let's do the same thing on the bottom one. What is the overall charge on the left? We've got six H pluses and one VO3 minus. What's the overall charge? Four. Plus five. Plus five. Six pluses and one minus, plus five. What's the overall charge on the right side? Plus two. Does water have a charge listed? No, water does not have a charge. So it's literally just plus two. I'm literally just adding up charges I see. That's it. So I need to make those two equal. How many electrons will help make those equal? Three. 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 Which side do I have to that put them on? <laughs> All right, enough of the middle, people. Three electrons on the left, because then I have three minuses and five pluses. That's plus two. On this side, it's plus two as well. You should, at this point, stare at it and go, do I have somebody losing electrons and somebody gaining electrons? Because one of them should have electrons on the right and some, one should have electrons on the left. And we do. So we have an oxidation and reduction. OK, next step. Um, step three, if necessary, multiply one or both balanced half reactions by an integer to equalize the number of electrons transferred. We need the number of electrons lost and gained to be equal. They're not right now. One's losing two, one's gaining three. So here's where our least common multiple comes in super handy. What's the least common multiple of two and three? Six. Six. So I'm going to multiply to get to that. So this top one I'm going to multiply by three to make six electrons. And this bottom one I'm going to multiply by two to make six electrons. And I have to multiply that three all the way through and the two all the way through the reaction. So I'm going to actually rewrite these again underneath where I have multiplied those out. Oops, too far. Love it. It's so fun. Once you know the pattern, it's really easy. Oh, stop. Three zinc yields three zinc two plus plus six electrons. All I have done right here is multiplied that three from the top one all the way through. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom one. Six electrons plus 12 H plus plus two VO3 minus yields two V2 plus plus six water. That's right, I should warn you, I'm taping this class for a bunch of people at absent first period, because can you see why you wouldn't want to learn this on your own? Yeah. Taping us. Uh, they they might hear you. See? You're famous forever. Jake? The reason I multiplied by 3 and 2 is because I need the number of electrons that are being lost for that one to be equal to the number of electrons being gained by the other. That's really why we are doing all this crazy balancing stuff. And originally at 2 and 3, they were not the same. So I'm going to do that to make them the same. All right, that is step 3. Step 4, add the half reactions and cancel identical species that appear on both sides. So here I'm going to literally add these together. And anything that's lost 
you know, found on the right side of one arrow and the left side of another, I can cancel out. Your electrons better cancel out. You just made sure they were the same number. So your electrons have to cancel. There may be other things that cancel. Like you may have H pluses on one side of one and the other side of another or waters or things like that. So you, you've got to look. There may be other things. In this case, there isn't. It's only the H pluses. So I cross anything out and then I simply add it up. Anything on the left side of one arrow drops down to the left side. It does not matter what order you put these in on that side of the arrow as long as they're on the correct side of the arrow. And then on the other side, add them up. What is the relevance of all this? What are we trying to do? We're trying to balance the equation and make sure the electrons lost and gained are equal. Remember, our goal is the battery. We're trying to understand the battery, but in order to understand the battery, we have to be able to write balanced equations because they're super important when we get to the battery. So this is our baby steps to get there. Okay, so in this case, step five says check to be sure the elements and charges balance. So yeah, we're going to go, okay, I've got three zinc, three zinc, 12 hydrogen ions, 12 hydrogens, two vanadium, six oxygens. Yeah, it looks good. You normally would check that. The other thing it tells you to check is the charge. Make sure the charges are balanced. So that is, what is the overall charge on this left side? When I add up the charges, I see. Plus 10. There's 12 H pluses and two VO3 minuses. Does everyone see where that plus 10 comes from? Okay. What is the overall charge on the right? plus 10, Eek, my pen's not working, six pluses and another four plus, that's 10. That's what they mean by checking the charge. If your elements and your charge balance, you're probably right. Okay, it's just we need to check that too. Julia. 10 comes from this. Here I, whoops, let me get my highlighter. Come on, highlighter, there we go. 12 pluses and two negatives. Add them up, you get plus 10. This, this doesn't have a charge, right? Over here, three times two plus is six plus. Two times two plus is four plus. This does not have a charge. So when you add that, you get 10 plus. Does that follow? Okay. All right, we're not done. There's actually another step your book forgot to write down, step six. So I'm gonna have you write that down in your notes. And then we're going to do another example. They don't. It's just an extra special case we're going to add to it because you know more. You can do better. Here is step six. Write this down. In basic solution, add enough OH minus. to both sides to cancel the H pluses and form water. Cancel as necessary. Basic solution, add enough OH minuses to both sides to cancel the H pluses and form water. Cancel as necessary. So here's what we're going to do. This comes after step five, and it's only a special case. It's only good in basic solution. The only time you'll do this step is literally if you are told it's in basic solution. Otherwise, you won't do this step. So I'm going to have you try this one for a few minutes. Here's the equation, NO3 minus plus Cl minus in a base yields NO plus Cl2. And I'm going to have you do steps one through five on this, but here's what I want you to consider. You can assign oxidation numbers. You'll notice in any of the steps, you didn't need the oxidation numbers. They were only useful in seeing who attached to who. Although sometimes it's kind of easy to tell. 
NO3 minus, I'm, if I'm writing a half reaction with NO3 minus, what do you think is on the other half? NO. Probably not Cl2, right? That wouldn't match up so well. Now you can double check it because over here, like this is minus 2, so nitrogen is plus 5. Over here, oxygen is minus 2. What is nitrogen and NO? Plus 2. Yeah. Nitrogen went from plus 5 to plus 2. So as we write those half reactions, NO3 minus is going to go to NO. And Cl minus is going to go to Cl2. Here chlorine is 0 in Cl2, and here it has a charge. So we definitely see that they're linked together. Here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to do steps 1 through 5, and then we'll do step 6 together. So use those rules. Don't miss any steps, especially balance the non-oxygen, non-hydrogens. Don't miss that step. You'll need to do that here. Elson? Um, In Cl minus, the charge is negative one. Okay. Yep. It's by itself when it doesn't have a charge. Like in Cl2, it's zero here. All right, so try to do steps one through five right now. All right, here's what we're going to do. I know some of you are done and some of you are still stumped on a step. We're going to go through the five steps quickly and then we'll do step six together. So, first step is to balance what? <laughs> Everything except hydrogen and oxygen, which in this case is those chlorines, right? So we need two Cl minuses here. The nitrogens are already balanced and we don't deal with the oxygens yet in this step. All right, so we balance the non-oxygen, non-hydrogens. Next step is to balance the what? Oxygen. oxygen by adding what? Water. So in this top one, I have three oxygens on the left, but only one on the right. So I need two more oxygens. So I'm going to add two waters to get that. Okay. All right, next step is I'm going to balance what? Hydrogens by adding H plus. H plus. So I've just added four hydrogens on the right side. So I need four H pluses on the left to balance those. I don't have any O's or H's in that chlorine half reaction, so I'm just ignoring those. All right, now the next step is to balance what? The charge. So on this right-hand side, what is the overall charge of the 4H pluses and the NO3 minus? Plus 3. Plus three. What's the overall charge on the other side? Zero. Zero. How many electrons do I need? Three. three. Which side am I going to put them on? Wow. Left. Good. All right. On the bottom one, what's the overall charge on the 2Cl minus? Minus two. minus 2. What's the overall charge on the chlorine? Zero. How many electrons do I need? Two. Which side? the right. Eek, sorry, my pen was not working there for a second. So we need two electrons on the right, and that will make them equal. Okay, next step, what do I got to do to those electrons? B make them the same. So what's the least common multiple? Six again is not always six, but it just happens to be here. So I'm going to multiply this top one by two and the bottom one by three. And I'm going to rewrite everything because otherwise it'll be a mess. So I'm just rewriting those multiplied out. Six electrons plus eight H plus plus two NO3 minus yields two NO plus four waters. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom one. I'm going to multiply everything through with that three. So six Cl minus yields three Cl2 plus six electrons. Super. Once I have done that step, what do I do with those? Add them together and cross stuff out. My electrons cancel, they better. I don't think anything else cancels here. But again, look, just in case. So I'm going to drop everything down. It does not matter what order. It just matters that you're on the proper side of the arrow. Is everyone with me? That finishes step four. 
Step five is to check. So yes, I have eight H pluses, two nitrogens on both sides, six oxygens, six chlorines. My atoms are balanced. Are my charges balanced? What's the overall charge on the left? Zero. Eight H plus plus eight minuses. What's the overall charge on this side? Zero, so I look good. But because when I go back to this, I told you that it was in a base. We have to do step six. And only if you're told if it's in a base will you do step six. So step six says, oops, scroll back to it. Ooh, there we go. If in, base, in basic solution, add enough OH minuses to both sides to cancel the H pluses and form water. So when I look at this, I have eight H pluses. So I'm going to add eight OH minuses to cancel the eight H pluses, but I have to do that to both sides. So if I add eight OH minuses on the left, I have to add it on the right. The eight H pluses and eight OH minuses form how many waters? Eight waters. But then in step six, I said cancel as necessary. Why would I say that? What could now cancel? The waters. I have four waters on the right. I have eight on the left. I can cancel out all four of them. How many waters will remain if I cancel out four of the eight? Four. four. And so now my reaction is four water plus two NO3 minus plus six Cl minus and I'm just rewriting everything to make it what it truly is, plus eight OH minus. And now this is my final answer. And again, you can check that your atoms are balanced and that your charges are balanced because they still should be. Okay, so then you have this worksheet, which I'm gonna give you. And let me pause this here for a second. Find out that it's not equal, and what you know? What if you, you you know the charges aren't equal? Then that tells you you made a mistake. Honestly, don't try to find your mistake. Try to just do it again. It's really really hard. There's such a mess of work. It's really hard to find your mistake. Um, on the worksheet you just got, your homework is to do one through seven, and I want you to notice. You notice how six and seven literally say base. So six and seven are the only ones you'll do step six with. One through five, you won't. You clearly have to be set in a base to do that last step. Okay? So that is your homework to do that. Goodbye, YouTube people.